Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder. And today we are having a first impressions on the USS Arizona. And as far as it stands right now, it also will be the last video on this horrendous deal of a ship. And um, I also want to throw in that Gaijin was right. And so, with that said, get yourself, if you're old enough, a strong, strong drink, because just by watching it, I promise you're gonna need it. If you're currently grinding this ship, stop it. This is absolutely not worth it as it stands right now. For its performance, this is um, probably the worst top tier thing overall. I tell you right now, even the Type 93, the truck with the SAMs that can otherwise do nothing, is a better deal to grind than this thing. But Napalm, this is a battleship. It's a top tier battleship. It has 12 14 inch guns. Oh boy, <laughs> you watch. I have the perfect gameplay that I'll speed up by four times and then even then your brain is gonna melt. So do you have your drink, your snacks and are you ready to, re to receive some negative wipes? Let's let's get started. Okay, so when I was making the statement that Gaijin was right, I was referring to that Gaijin said that battleship fights are boring. Now, initially, I would disagree because big guns, you know, hitting cruisers, ruffle stomping them into the ground. Yeah, and then also having the armor to be basically immune to cruisers. That's nice. However, the Arizona has the perfect mix of being a battleship that is so much worse actually than the Scharnhorst at not just killing enemy battleships but also enemy cruisers. That has to do with it being very slow and unmaneuverable but I would accept it if it would have furious firepower and thinking about the Hugo which is still the absolute, absolute alpha predator in War Thunder and also liking the Congo with quote-unquote only 8 14 inch guns you would think that what's what's so bad about this gun well very bad rotation speed the ap has good pen but deals no damage the he is really not great and it does not have sap so it's just like poking holes this ship overall feels like a kv2 that fires solid shot and has only two crew members left alive and they are both red on a fully untrained crew this is the arizona do you get the horrendous disaster that this ship is also you might expect wow u.s battleship it must have a lot of aa eh -eh. it has eight five inch 25 mark 11 guns and i don't think that they have proxy fuse Certainly, this is a 1938 configuration, and it also has then only eight heavy machine guns, eight 50 cals. That's not gonna impress anybody. Well, what about the secondaries? Well, you know, secondaries can be nice. Look at the German battlecruisers and battleships. They certainly can be used between the 20-second reload. Um, here you have 12 5 inch 51 mark 7 guns and they're knocked out rather quickly that's six per side and the firing angles might not be really convincing overall not good so again let me just hammer this in your brain so you get a hold of this the main caliber reload speed stock is 65 seconds and with a fully trained perfectly aced crew you get it down to 50 seconds effectively a Sharnos can shoot three salvos for every one salvo that you fire and since the ap when it penetrates does an equal amount of damage between the 11 and the 14 inch guns in game not not historically accurate but in game I so much would go for the Scharnhorst. And that's before we talk about the armor. Now, at first, I was 
really surprised how, for example, tanky the Congo is. You know, you angle it and then you can absorb a considerable amount of damage. The Sharnohas test is all or nothing armor scheme. Now, that was intended for long range gunnery. For long range gunnery duels versus other battleships. It was not intended to be spanned by destroyers, uh, cruisers, and other battleships um, with HE and APM and a mixture of those. Combine this with Gaijin having significantly increased the repair times for broken modules and how the crew system works. Basically, if your AA gets knocked out and then one of your main caliber turrets gets knocked out, you basically repair the ship obviously, and you start with the lowest effort. So the AA position, then the secondaries, and then the main guns. And the crew that mans all those gun positions gets taken from within the ship where it has not been hit. And the armored parts um, are big, but the northern armored parts are even bigger. So even by cruisers like in Atlanta, you get spammed down like you would not believe. It is crazy. So you do so much crew, increasing further the repair times, which are insane. I have repair times of 90 seconds with a fully trained expert crew, not having lost too much crew. When a barrel gets HE damaged, I have to repair it, which is hilarious by itself. So this ship is frustration after frustration after frustration after frustration. And that's before we talk then about also that the aiming system is one of your worst enemies. So if you have just lined up the perfect shot, 12 shots get out and they all missed because it just gave you the wrong reading. And let me tell you, I tried to compensate for this with all the tricks that I know and I probably have played uh, more battles combined than the rest of the um, than the naval forces community. That's probably true. Um, this is made for trolling you. This is perfectly designed to troll you. Now let's talk about the armor when it works. The main armor belt is 343 millimeters of rolled cemented armor. That is almost twice as much as the Congo. And the front bulkhead is 330 millimeters. So you basically can uh, park this ship in a 45 degree angle towards the enemy. And the turrets have also the firing angles. Uh, the barbette is 330 millimeter and the turret faces are a whopping 457.2 millimeters of rolled cemented armor. And they're also angled. I don't think that even a Leopard 2A6 in the game with the best AP FSTS would go through that. That is fantastic armor and indeed my turrets have not been knocked out once. Barbette, pent, yes, here and there, but yeah, the armor does work, but it gets bypassed by the game mechanics. And that anti-torpedo protection system, well, to be honest, I never had the chance to test it. Um, there is then, I cannot really see a turtle bag, although somebody has mentioned that there is one with around 40 millimeter. The deck plating is surprisingly bad. Um, it only shows at, um, well, the actual armor plating is 108 millimeters, but below that, is a second layer, um, basically a splinter proof deck with 25.4 millimeters. So that again sounds like considerable amounts of armor, but it doesn't really help. It, it is so weird. Reverse angling also should be quite effective. Um, at first the armor model looks good, but in practice it's, it's so weird to lose so much crew so quickly. And again, Surprisingly enough, faster than a Congo. So in a fight, Congo versus Arizona, even at long range, when the Congo is played correctly in the USS Arizona is played correctly, because the Congo has so much faster reload, is faster, and also can angle, and has the mighty Yuga Sap, I would give it probably, yeah, seven out of 10 times to the Congo. And that is, known as a fragile battle cruiser and to use as Arizona as a good, solid, sturdy um, 
you know, battleship. <laughs> in War Thunder, Gaijin made it perfectly clear what they think about US standard battleships. Oh boy is it bad. Have I mentioned that the AP just doesn't deal damage despite the good pen? It's so bad. The AA is basically useless. And this thing, you know, costs a million civil lines to buy after you have researched it for 400,000 RP with also two battleships, the USS Wyoming and the USS North Dakota. Um, that is absolutely broken. And if you have the premium USS Helena, you get farmed by the Congos even more. Have you put a talisman on the Baltimore? Another Congo food. And you know there are a lot of Yugos out there trying to get the Congo. Don't play it. Don't research it. Don't touch it. Don't come close to it. Save yourself your mental health. Just don't do it. This is probably one of the hottest candidates for worst ship in the game. And yes, I'm also looking at the HMS Churchill. This is how trash this battleship is. I hate it and I never want to see it again. And that's it for me today. Thank you very much. Just to summarize, this battle took 33 minutes and it was not really in trouble. I just did it for this video and I just can't bring myself to have a g another game with this thing. It's absolutely not worth it. And I'm sorry that you had to uh, really watch this, but you know, better watch this and spend here the 12 minutes watching this video rather than playing for days to get this and be utterly, utterly, utterly disappointed. Anyway, I hope you at least will appreciate the effort. Give this video a like, subscribe if you want to see more, share this with your friends and your clanmates. And as usual, we'll see each other on the battlefields, in the skies and on the waves of War Thunder.